Okay, in our continuing series of What to Watch, how about Space 1999? We'll talk about that in just a second. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and why do I mention Space 1999? Well, a um, couple of episodes ago, we talked about Fireball XL5. That was done by Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. It was the first um, British-made sci-fi that was ever uh, exported to the United States and uh, actually made uh, for an international market. And Jerry Anderson did several other shows like Supercar and Joe Knighty and uh, UFO, which uh, actually was syndicated as well, but uh, mostly played in England. And then uh, there was Space 1999, and they wanted it to appeal to an American audience. Now, uh, to give you a little background on this, Star Trek had been off the air. Um, this was between the time that it went off network and before it really caught on in syndication. And in the meantime, uh, the Canadian show Star Lost came into being, but it was only uh, available in Canada. We didn't see it down here. Still haven't seen it. And Space 1999 came in to kind of fill the gap. Now, Jerry Anderson is no stranger to spaceship designs and things like this, but his idea was, what if the moon uh, exploded and left orbit? And you have the moon as kind of um, the method of propulsion and also the state of which everybody finds themselves in. Uh, it's a desolate place uh, where they have to do everything by themselves and their hope for survival is to find some planet that they can uh, fly their short range spaceships to. In fact, when they leave Earth, they don't know what's happened to Earth. It could be earthquakes and all kinds of things happening that would make it uninhabitable. So they elected to not try to escape the moon, but to ride with it. And with uh, various um, uh, short range spaceships, they were able to investigate other planets that they went by. And it's an interesting premise. They had Martin Landau, who uh, later uh, became a much bigger star than he was at the time, and Barbara Bain, his wife at the time. Uh, they had been known for uh, Mission Impossible, the American television series that starred Peter Graves. It had um, other people in it, but the standout two were uh, Martin Landau and Barbara Bain. And so uh, by putting them on here, it's an appeal to an American audience. Uh, it's distributed worldwide, but mostly uh, trying to hit the American market. And they use the usual Jerry Anderson mo model making techniques and rocket motor things to have the Eagle transporters look very realistic. They have uh, the moon base all set up and uh, elevators uh, that bring the Eagles down to their hangars. Uh, we have a city basically of uh, people that have their families there uh, kind of smacks of what would happen later in star trek the next generation and the first season of it was actually pretty well done uh, there were a number of mystery programs uh, horror type programs one that rem uh, I'm, I'm thinking of the most is where they have the first child born on alpha since uh, leaving earth and uh, the, the child, uh, hours later, is a full-grown adult. And um, the, the episode and the teaser starts with a scream. So uh, they were pretty good episodes, uh, although the idea of the sterility of the moon base, the um, concern of all the people they thought was perhaps too heavy. And despite the fact that the uniforms were designed by Rudy Gernreich, who was an international designer who um, uh, first designed the Monokini, I believe, um, among other things, um, had some very good-looking uniforms. Uh, second season, though, Jerry Anderson thought that uh, it wasn't appealing enough to the American audience. So what he did was he got a Star Trek producer uh, to come overseas and direct the second season. And in doing so, this director, this uh, producer, uh, changed everything. He uh, added more color to the uniforms. He eliminated every character that he could that wasn't under contract and tried to uh, revamped the program completely. The only thing that was kept was that it was blown out of orbit by a nuclear explosion and uh, 
Martin Landau and Barbara Bain are still starring, but just about everybody else was turned over except for a couple of characters. And they would have been out too had they not had better agents. So uh, that was um, the situation there. Now, the producer in question was Fred Freiberger. Fred Freiberger was responsible for the last season of Star Trek, the original series. And uh, if you want to say that the person that thought Spock's brain was a pretty good show, uh, this is the caliber of Fred Freiberger. He was no Gene Roddenberry. He was no Bob Justman, for that matter. And uh, he was uh, uh, put on here and pretty much did a hack job for the last season of the original series. Even though there were some good stories in there, uh, it was... Um, badly budgeted. Bob Justman once said that uh, it could make uh, a good radio show for the budget that they had. And Fred Freiberger seemed to be just fine with all of that. So they bring him over to direct the second, or rather to produce the second season of Space 1999. And a similar kind of thing happens. They try to go for more action adventure. Uh, they put uh, Landau and Bain almost in the background as they bring a whole new character who's kind of a swashbuckler and uh, they take away uh, the sterility of the moon base, add a whole lot more color to it. Uh, they throw out some of the cooler gadgets that uh, were used in the first season, like the uh, Comlock. Uh, I used to like that. It was a, a little um, uh, handheld device that was uh, a communicator and also a, um, a door lock. Uh, if you had the right authorization, your comm lock would open whatever doors, which answers the question of uh, how the doors get opened. In Star Trek, very often, uh, doors would stay closed until uh, the character made whatever speech he was going to make, and then the door would open for him to leave. It was as if the doors could read the script, which, in fact, they did. At any rate, um, there were some things like that, that that kind of made it more realistic, and they took all that out. Um, the, uh, they added a, a character who could, uh, who was a metamorph who was, uh, played by, um, Catherine Schell, I believe was her name and a uh, good enough actress, but, but, um, uh, trying to be a little bit too, um, like a spot character. And I don't think really any of it worked and it didn't last beyond that second season. But if you can uh, get your hands on the first season of Space 1999, I highly recommend it. The second season is almost a different show, and I don't recommend that. So I'd like to know what you think about it. If you've seen the show, uh, uh, let us know uh, what your opinions are of the first versus second season. And of course, if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, we could use some more subscribers here. It keeps the channel strong. Uh, I would appreciate it very much. And ring the bell so you know when the next video is coming your way. So thank you for watching, and until next time, don't go far.